Welcome to the City of Everett Outdoor Multipurpose Facility Public Scoping Meeting. We'll begin shortly and give folks a few seconds to join the meeting. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Everett Outdoor Multipurpose Facility Project Public Scoping Meeting. My name is Nicole Lobazinski, and I'm a member of the consultant team from Environmental Science Associates, or ESA. We're supporting the City of Everett with this process, and I will be facilitating tonight's meeting. Before we begin the presentation, I'd like to walk through a few important items. We'll have two segments in tonight's meeting. First, a presentation, and second, a public comment period. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to give City of Everett staff an opportunity to hear from you, so there will not be a Q&A or a discussion portion. To reduce background noise and make sure things run smoothly, all attendees will be muted during the presentation and comment portions. Due to the limitations of the Zoom webinar format, we will not be able to show who is in the meeting or turn on cameras. However, I will provide updates throughout the night about how many people are in the meeting. So far, we have 11 people here tonight. As a reminder, all verbal comments provided will be part of the SEPA record and will be made available during the draft EIS. Tonight, everyone is participating through the Zoom platform. So here are the key features you need to know about. You can adjust the volume by clicking on the audio settings in the bottom left of your screen. If you can't hear us well, try turning up the volume. To enable a live transcript or closed captioning, please select the CC live transcript icon and then show subtitle. If you have a clarifying question about the format of the meeting tonight or the EIS process, you can submit that through the question and answer window in the bottom of your screen. The chat is disabled for attendees tonight. Please save your scoping comments for the verbal comment portion of the evening or submit them via the other scoping comment channels that we will share shortly. Many questions are actually comments in disguise, so we encourage you to submit your questions as official scoping comments. That will help the project team understand if aspects of the draft alternatives or scope are not clear or comprehensive as we prepare the draft EIS. Anything submitted to the Q&A will not be recorded as a formal SEPA scoping comment. If you're having technical issues with Zoom tonight, please send us a message through the Q&A and we will do our best to help. We also have a call-in number for those who wish to listen along. That number and the webinar ID to join are on the screen. And if you wish to raise your hand via the phone during the verbal comment portion of the evening, you can do so by selecting star nine. And finally, as a reminder, the meeting is being recorded. Any verbal comments that are made will become public information. The City of Everett is hosting this public meeting as part of the State Environmental Policy Act or SEPA scoping process, which you'll learn more about shortly. And tonight our goals are to share more information about the project proposal, the SEPA Environmental Impact Statement or EIS process and schedule, and share how you can be involved and submit comments on key issues and concerns. Here is an agenda for our evening. The main event is to give you all an opportunity to provide a scoping comment. Some attendees may not be familiar with the proposal or the SEPA process, so we would like to give you some background on those topics first. We'll start with some welcome remarks, then share information about the project, the SEPA EIS process, how you can comment and then listen to and consider the perspectives of individual members providing comment. As a reminder, tonight's meeting is only one of three ways to comment. You can also comment via email or by mail. So we'll share that information about how else to provide a comment in the chat. With that, I will turn it over to Scott Pattison from the city of Everett. Thank you, Nicole. Welcome and thank you to everyone for participating tonight. My name is Scott Pattison. I'm the City of Everett Special Projects Manager overseeing this project. Also in attendance tonight from the City of Everett is Dan Ernesty, our Economic Development Director, and York Stevens-Wajda, Planning Director with the City of Everett. 
With that, I'll hand it off to Julie DiDonato with SOJ. Thank you, Scott. Hello, everyone. My name is Julie DiDonato. I am with the consulting firm SOJ, which was hired by the city to provide project management services for this specific project. We are very pleased to have reached the EIS expanded scoping process milestone. Why are we looking at new site options for the Aquasox field? Due to new Major League Baseball facility requirements, Funko Field, the current home of the Aquasox, does not conform to the new standards. Since 1984, the Everett Aquasox team has provided important community and economic benefits, and the city of Everett is invested in finding a solution to keep the Aquasox in Everett. The EIS process will analyze different site options and assist the city in making decisions for the future of the Aquasox field location. The city has undertaken an effort to support the development of a new outdoor multi-purpose facility within the city of Everett. This facility will serve as the Aquasox home field, as well as other public amenities and programs. Currently, we are in the pre-design phase, and as the site selection progresses, more project-specific information will become available. You can learn more about the project and follow its progress by visiting the city's webpage dedicated to this project. We will put a link to the webpage in the chat box. With that, I will turn the presentation over to Pam Zander, the EIS project manager. Good evening, everybody. My name is Pam Zander, and I also work with Environmental Science Associates supporting the city with the EIS process. I'm going to provide an overview of SEPA and the scoping process for you. You're here tonight as part of the SEPA process, and SEPA stands for the State Environmental Policy Act. The citation on the slide is from the Washington Administrative Code 19711. And you can go there if you want to read more about what's required of SEPA. An important thing to remember is that SEPA is not a permit, it's a process. It's a way to involve other agencies and the public on proposed projects. Information gathered during the SEPA process helps us to learn more about how the proposal might affect the environment. Public comments are taken into consideration in decision-making. The City of Everett is the SEPA lead agency for this proposal, and they determine that an environmental impact statement is required because there would likely be a significant adverse environmental impact resulting from the project. The City will review all of the environmental analyses before they make any decisions. What is an EIS? Well, EIS stands for Environmental Impact Statement which is a technical document written by an objective third party to provide formal information to the public and decision makers about the potential environmental impacts of the proposal on the natural and built environment. The document includes existing environmental conditions, promotes alternatives and potential impacts and measures to reduce or mitigate any significant unavoidable adverse impacts. This graphic shows what the EIS process looks like. On the left, you can see that there was a determination of significance issued in January 2024, meaning that an EIS would be required. The red indicates where we are now, which is the comment period for the scoping phase. After the scoping comments are reviewed, the city will determine if any revisions are needed prior to working on the draft EIS. After the draft EIS is issued, there'll be another comment period. And then the issuance of a final EIS will be the last step in the EIS process. What does scoping mean? Well, scoping is a term used in the SEPA process to designate the first stage or step in the EIS process. It's meant to ensure everyone 
um, that may have an interest in the project is notified and can participate. This is a time to focus on what the significant issues might be and come up with reasonable alternatives that may have a lesser environmental impact. We also want to look at potential mitigation measures that can reduce environmental impacts. These are all things we're hoping people will provide comment on tonight. At this time, the city's decided that the main environmental topics to analyze will be for noise, light and glare, historic and cultural resources, and transportation. There are other issues that could be studied, and you can bring up other topics if you think those issues are ones that you would be concerned about. I'll now share a little bit more about what alternatives will be studied. There are currently three alternatives, a no action alternative, alternative one, Bunko Field, and alternative two, downtown site. First, the no action alternative. This alternative serves as the baseline condition for comparison with the other alternatives. It describes the impacts that would occur if the proposed project does not proceed. Under the no action, the existing Funko Field site would remain unchanged, resulting in the high likelihood that the Everett Aqua Sox team would be relocated outside the city. Alternative one, the Funko Field Action Alternative is located approximately three quarters of a mile south of downtown Everett, directly west and adjacent to the Broadway and I-5 corridors. The site is owned by the Everett School District, and the site includes the Funko Field, Everett Memorial Stadium, and the shared parking facilities. It is the current home of the Everett Aqua Sox, as well as Everett School District high school sports teams, and Everett Community College's baseball team. The site is bordered by single-family detached housing to the north and west, the Broadway and I-5 corridor to the east, and 41st Street to the south. Under this alternative, it's assumed that Everett Memorial Stadium will remain, and with these assumptions in mind, approximately seven acres is available in which to construct the project. To provide additional space, procurement of the 0.77 acre property at the southwest corner of Broadway and 38th Street would need to be considered. This slide shows a preliminary concept drawing of alternative one. And then we go to alternative two, downtown site. The downtown site action alternative is located on the eastern edge of Everett's downtown core directly adjacent and east of the Angel of the Winds Arena and approximately half a mile west of the I-5 corridor. The site is currently utilized by a mix of commercial businesses, including light industrial, distribution, retail, restaurant, and office. The site is bordered by Broadway Avenue to the west, Hewitt Avenue to the north, a rail line to the east, and Pacific Avenue to the south. The site is approximately 12.5 acres in size, and the site is currently comprised of 28 privately owned parcels. In addition to the privately owned properties, existing public right of ways for McDougall Avenue, Wall Street, and Payne Avenue would need to be vacated to accommodate the downtown site alternative. This slide shows a preliminary concept drawing of alternative to downtown site action alternative. And finally, here are a few tips for commenting on the scope of the EIS. Be specific and give details or ideas about what your issues or concerns are so we can look at them in the EIS analyses. And also, if you have ideas for mitigation or how impacts could be reduced. You're invited to comment on the EIS alternatives, topics the EIS should evaluate, potential impacts and mitigation, and any permits or approvals that should be required as part of the process. Thank you, and I'll now turn it back to my colleague, Nicole. Thanks, Pam. So we are now moving into the public comment period portion of the meeting. 
Here are a few ground rules to keep in mind. Please use welcoming and inclusive language. Be respectful of different viewpoints and experiences and try to frame your comments positively. And here is how we're going to do things tonight. In order to comment and provide a verbal comment, please use the raise hand button located at the bottom of the window to be entered into a queue to speak. I will call your name and do my best with pronunciation. Once I call your name to speak, you'll be unprompted to unmute, so you'll need to select the unmute button. You'll have three minutes to speak. We'll share a timer on screen to help keep track of time. Please start your comment by providing your name and your physical address for the SEPA record. When your three minutes are up, we're going to move to the next speaker. And we'll give everyone a chance to provide one verbal comment this evening. But if you want to provide additional comments, you can do that by mail or by email as well. Um, and it doesn't look like we have, maybe we have uh, one person on the phone. If you are on the phone and you would like to provide a comment, you can press star nine to virtually raise your hand. And then once you're called on, you can do star six to unmute. Um, and we do have a court reporter in attendance who will be transcribing all the verbal comments. So please speak clearly. Um, and yeah, just as another reminder, uh, commenting verbally tonight is only one of three ways to provide an official SEPA comment. Um, and here is the information for how you can submit a comment by email or by mail. The deadline for scoping comments is 4.30 p.m. on February 20th. We'll also uh, put that in the chat. All right, so we can get started. If anyone would like to provide a verbal scoping comment period tonight, please use the raise hand feature and we will call on you. I see that Brock Howell has their hand raised. So I will go ahead and uh, let you go first, Brock. Once you begin speaking, please share your name and address for the record. And then um, you'll have three minutes to provide your comment. Uh, I was worried there's gonna be no public comment. So thought I should speak up. Brock Howell, Executive Director, Everett Station District Alliance. Um, Every Station District Alliance is the neighborhood organization that provides neighborhood services uh, to the area uh, where both stadium locations are provided. Um, we have a, a mission of partnering for a safe, equitable neighborhood. And our vision is that the neighborhood will be a vital economic engine for the region, a major regional transit hub, a home for industry and residents a great place to live, work, and play, and a model for how natural systems can flourish in an urban context, supporting human health and resilience. We do not have an official position currently between the two alternatives presented. Um, we're still learning and uh, collecting information. Um, there are, in addition to the items that have been scoped for this project, I'd like to uh, have the city consider, and hopefully you will, uh, the potential impact on uh, climate, housing, um, and then economic benefits and, and costs as well of the various proposals. And I realize not all of them get scoped into an EIS, but they are important for the decision-making process. The city's climate strategy um, is focused on using transit-oriented development uh, as a key uh, method uh, for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and this is consistent with the regional policy as well of uh, locating 65% of residential growth and 75% of employment growth within a walking distance. And so the uh, location of the stadium could directly impact the number of housing units that would be built near the future light rail station and the current station. And this needs to be considered when looking at the city's ability to meet its climate goals. 
And so we would encourage you to look at both the housing impact of this proposal, as well as uh, the climate impact. Um, within the area of alternative uh, two, there's uh, about 3 million net square feet of developable capacity, which would be about 3,000 units. So this is a not a light issue uh, to consider. Uh, there are uh, considerations for, uh, for tax revenue. We don't know what the property ownership is going to look like in the future and whether the property will be pulled out from uh, having to pay property taxes if it's a public-private partnership with the city owning the property. Uh, and so this is something we'd like to consider, as well as the potential uh, economic gain or, or loss that might uh, be incurred. So these are all factors. And as our board continues to uh, learn more, uh, we'll continue to have these conversations and uh, you know, continue to, to look into having position in the future. Thank you, Brock. If anyone else would like to provide a comment, please use the raise hand feature. All right, we have um, Gahar Sarikbayeva with your hand up. So once we unmute, please share your name and address for the record, and then you'll have three minutes to provide your comment. Um, my email address? Um, your physical address would be great or what you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah, I provided um, my uh, um, email address. It's uh, the first letter of my name, G, uh, followed by my last name, Sirikbaeva, at gmail.com. And I am um, providing here some comments on behalf of the Equity Committee of the Convergence uh, Collaborative that um, Let's see, that is a partnership between businesses, nonprofits, uh, public agencies, and community members. Um, the purpose of which is to foster the development of the neighborhood around Everett Station. So uh, we are uh, going to provide a letter, written letter, with more detailed um, kind of thoughts and comments from the equity committee. Uh, the letter uh, will uh, only reflect discussions and opinions of the equity committee and not necessarily of the organizations whose staff serve on the equity committee. Uh, and the, yeah, it's uh, not meant to kind of uh, offer uh, the opinions, uh, formal positions of ESDA or any of the organizations that are participating in the committee, but uh, as a whole. So uh, we reviewed um, those alternatives against um, uh, the eight equity principles that uh, have been set by the committee and uh, for any proposals basically affecting that area. And this uh, stadium alternative two falls uh, um, in that area, right? So uh, the uh, main issue that uh, the committee discussed and we would like to uh, offer here is the opportunity cost of placing uh, the stadium in the area uh, where potential there could be uh, some uh, housing, affordable housing and uh, jobs that could be created. So, um, yeah, we would like to suggest that uh, this opportunity cost of housing, um, kind of potential uh, for housing be included in the consideration for alternative two. And um, yeah, just uh, all that potential uh, to create convenient transportation options for people uh, who could be living uh, in that neighborhood in the proximity of the train station if um, 
alternative tool uh, was not uh, of, kind of uh, moved forward with. And um, yeah, just in general, uh, just the process, uh, the planning process, uh, uh, kind of centering, uh, centering the community and uh, particularly those who have been historically marginalized, uh, finding ways to include them in the process. So that's it. Thank you for your comment. So next I see Howard Bargreen's hand is up. Howard, when you unmute, please share your name and address for the SEPA record, and then you'll have three minutes to comment. Good evening. My name is Howie Bargreen. I'm at Bargreen Coffee Company at 2821 Rucker. Been here off and on since 1959 working. So I've seen a lot of what the government has tried to do to help Everett. My observation is that uh, governments and politicians love to build uh, places where they can put their name on them, but they're not very good at managing them. I know that the event center hasn't turned out the way we would had hoped as far as how much it's used. And I know that the Snohomish County has to basically underwrite uh, the losses at the event center every year. So building something that's maybe three or four times as expensive as the event center was or is really needs to be more than just a building project. It needs to be thought through as a management project. The city built Claire's place maybe three or four years ago. I think it cost 30 million and they didn't manage it very well. So everybody's out of the building now because it's full of meth and illegal drugs. I spent almost all day yesterday getting um, illegal drug people off of um, James J. Hill Park, which is right across from where you propose this baseball field right across from my coffee store on Rucker and right next to a uh, property that we rent down on McDougal, 32nd and McDougal. Uh, don't get very much help from the city on this management stuff. I don't see the city or the county or any kind of organization that's going to manage this baseball field doing much better. I wish they could. I just don't see it. So if we're going to spend 70 million on this project, uh, my guess is it will be mismanaged and not taken care of very well. Uh, but it'll be uh, part of the government's edifice complex where they like to build a lot of stuff and put their names on it and then not take care of it. Uh, sadly, that's my observation since 1959 and ever. Thank you for your comment. <clears throat> okay, I see that Nathaniel Engen has their hand up. So once we uh, prompt you to unmute, please share your name and your address for the SEPA record, and then you'll have three minutes. Hello, my name is Nathaniel Engen, and I am the founder of Black Forest Mushrooms located at 2110 Hewitt Ave. We just opened in December, uh, December 9th. Um, we are a 10,000 square foot indoor controlled environment farm that helps fight climate change and strengthen security in our local food supply chain. <laughs> By the end of the summer, uh, we are um, projected to produce somewhere around 20,000 pounds of gourmet, highly nutritious crop right in the heart of Everett, which gives a direct impact of supporting between 100 and 150,000 nutritious meals every month to our community and growing population. Um, my largest concern thus far has been um, the lack of communication directly to businesses, especially considering the address. Um, we were able to find out because we were luckily tapped into other communication channels within the city. Um, however, at no point um, did anybody reach out to um, 
our direct contact information on file with the city as a business that is registered uh, to perform business um, within the, the city of Everett. Um, we were able to find out through other channels, unfortunately. Um, so I think the, the largest thing that I'd be looking for is uh, better communication with stakeholders directly within um, and within the community and the impacted area, as well as the community surrounding. Um, furthermore, I would echo um, uh, certain points that um, Howard Bargreen just mentioned as far as proper management, um, considering the lack of support um, found at James J. Hill Park um, almost on a daily basis. Um, we are uh, reaching out and asking for support um, for uh, folks that are misusing uh, public space uh, quite clearly. Um, and so I think uh, I would have concerns on uh, proper management. I'd like to see specifically a plan in place on what the management technique is going to look like. Um, as somebody who's a veteran, um, has served my country um, honorably, and am uh, very excited for the possibilities of what Everett can hold. Um, I'm looking forward to the potential of this uh, the stadium, no matter uh, the location. Um, and I'm uh, very much looking forward to better lines of communication uh, moving forward. I appreciate your time. And uh, again, I look forward to this project and the economic development of our community. Thank you for your comment. If anyone else would like to provide a verbal comment, please raise your hand using the raise hand feature. And I see a question about how many folks are at the meeting currently. We have 18 attendees at the meeting right now. So we'll give folks another minute or so to raise their hand if they would still like to provide a comment tonight. I'm just going to uh, move to the next slide that shares um, some additional information about the other ways to comment, which is in the chat. And then um, one more slide that has uh, information about where you can learn more about the project. So you can read FAQs on the project website or contact Scott Pattison. Um, if you have specific questions. So I'll just leave this slide up for another minute for folks to take down this information and as a last chance for uh, folks to raise their hand. If no one raises their hand, we will conclude the meeting. So we'll just give folks another minute to take down this information and raise their hand if they would like to provide a comment if they haven't already.
All right, and I see we have um, one uh, remaining question in the Q&A, so uh, project team member can follow up. Um, and, oh, I'm Pete, you just submitted a question. Yes, the uh, images shown in the presentation are on the website. Um, so you can review those uh, on your own time. So uh, with that, um, Oh, Stephen will post the um, information from the chat about the website uh, to the Q&A so that you all can copy and paste that from there or jot that down. Um, if you go to the website, Scott's information is on there as well. Um, so I wanted to thank everyone for joining us this evening and for those who provided a verbal comment. As a reminder, the comment period ends on February 20th at 4.30 p.m. And, uh, oh, Tom, uh, I see you are going to answer a question live, so I'll go ahead and let you do that. Tom, if you would like to unmute yourself. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Nicole. Um, so to the question about the uh, alternatives and the alignment with the city's updated comprehensive plan, yes, that will be part of the environmental analysis uh, and will be included in the draft EIS. Great, thanks, Tom. All right, so we don't have any additional hands up. So with that, we will conclude tonight's evening. Thanks again for joining us. Um, please feel free to submit additional comments via email or via mail and uh, have a good night.